love to reconnect and see how things are. I hope the trial went well. What is there anything that I could do to help you improve moving forward? Are there any other needs I can meet? These are things I send to people because it's important to carry on that relationship after you've achieved the goal. Otherwise, you're just like everybody else. We're just selling you something and then walking. This is Morgan J. Ingram, host of the SDR Chronicles, bringing you sales development practitioners, leaders um, just across the globe to give you guys insight on how to be better on your jobs day in and day out and how to really progress your career in the right way. And today I have James from Serious Insights, um, just has done a lot of work in sales development, now leading a sales development team. So he really wants to talk about today how to build a relationship with using your personal brand um you know some people have personal brands um but they may not be leveraging them to actually create relationships to get that uh conversation set up or to get that demo set up so without any further ado i'm gonna let him introduce himself and we're gonna get the topic of the day yeah thanks morgan really happy to be here uh doing the show with you i, I think a lot of times my name is james buckley i am with Cirrus insight uh, Cirrus insight is the number one platform for salesforce and inbox integration uh, we work with gmail office 365 and Outlook. And today I'm going to talk about what to do now that you've worked so hard to build that personal brand and how to build relationships using it. Cool. So let's let's dive into the question that I get asked this a lot. So I want to see what your thoughts on it. Should sales professionals, SDRs, leaders be building a personal brand? I absolutely think so. Uh, so I, th I think SDRs and especially leaders of SDR teams have a great presence in events, a great presence in, uh, their, in their practice by teaching their team how to be successful. Most of the time when you talk about sales leaders, you talk about sales leaders that because they have the high numbers, right? So it makes sense. So the question is how do they have these high numbers? And I think the point there is that they've worked hard to build that personal brand by having a strong social presence or by meeting as many people as they can at an event, by saying funny things, right? This is the thing, these are the characteristics that you have that make you an individual in the sales community, somebody that's memorable. Awesome, yeah, and you have to be memorable and you have to get yourself out there. So talk about uh, building that, right? And so what, do you, what are ways that you are building your personal brand? Yeah, so my personal brand is, uh, is a funny one. I'm one of, of humor, I like to say, things that people will remember. So a great example of this that I give all the time is when we do events, we hand out Starbucks gift cards that have $5 on them. So the joke that I do when I hand those out to people is I say, there's $5 on there so you can get a napkin or a straw, right? Because Starbucks, notoriously expensive, right? We love you, Starbucks, don't misunderstand me. But it's a funny thing to say when people know that they pay $5 for a cup of coffee they could get at the Exxon station for 89 cents. So it's a funny thing when you say that and everybody resonates with it and they remember that. So then you hand them the card, hey, let me scan your badge. I'll follow up with you next week. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I appreciate it. And you walk away. But they remember you when you call back the next week because you say, hey, I gave you that Starbucks gift card, right? And they're like, dude, that was hilarious. It made my, my whole day that day. It was so funny. Uh, so it was good. You know, you could tell people things like, yeah, you know, we wipe your feet on the rug when you get in, they charge for that. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And uh, I like that. And also I see on LinkedIn that you do um, uh, SDR, like cadences. You talk about the templates that you send out to prospects yeah. and sometimes how you get like not good responses and how you get good responses. So talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I do. I, I like to put ideas out there. Like I think as an SDR community, right, people that do sales as a whole, we tend to like hoard these great ideas for our own. And I think that's folly, right? If you're truly being taking that consultative approach as part of your personal brand, you want to put that stuff out there, get those conversations started. And I, I, I do find that it's interesting to get the positive stuff and the negative stuff and see how that corresponds like I'll send something that's super positive out and maybe it gets like 15 likes one share and a couple comments but the moment you put something out there that's sort of in that gray area could be taken in lots of different directions it's like the wolves come out and they want you to engage in this argument but I'm always like yo your feedback is amazing thank you I'm gonna put all this into consideration moving forward make some adjustments updates to come and, and when you do that it's a very positive spin 
on something that you put out there that maybe didn't go over so well. So it's great to be able to capitalize it just despite the response. And did you, and this is, did you teach yourself how to do these things? Did you teach yourself how to make these simplest? Did you teach yourself how to build a brand? Or was it something that by osmosis you were like, I want to get myself out there? Like what makes you actually post those things? So, so re really my experience goes into a more traditional sales direction, right? I started out selling phone lines uh, for business to business. So it was door to door, B to B, banging on doors, starting conversations, and then eventually working your way into a pitch. So I used a lot of techniques that I was fortunate enough to have a good mentor. Uh, so I'll be speaking to a, uh, a represent, uh, uh, an owner of a business, and I'm shaking my head yes the entire time I speak to them. And eventually they begin to agree with everything that I say because I'm subtly shaking my head yes. Even you had a moment there where yeah, you're, yeah. Here you go, you're shaking your head, right? <laughs> it's, it works all the time when you're face to face. Uh, and then I also did door-to-door -door residential for Orkin Pest Control for a brief period of time. I'm 270 pounds, not an easy thing to get Dorothy, the widower, to open up her door at 9 o'clock in the morning while her husband's at work so I can do a free pest inspection. Uh, so that was something that I had to do was find ways to let people trust me. And I built that personal brand through humor because funny tends to make people drop their guard and they become a little more loose with the conversation. And you can have a real conversation now instead of trying to do the, let me tell you all about my features, right? <laughs> Sometimes yeah, sure. in that loop. So yeah, with that humor, are you using that on your like intro for your phone calls as well? Absolutely, uh, especially if I've met you at a show, follow up from a show is, is key for that. Uh, but even more so when I'm calling people, if I know where they're at, if I've done a little research on what they do, uh, I can talk about current events, make funny jokes. Like if I'm calling somebody in Cleveland, you better believe I'm making jokes about the Cavs right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that game last night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Durant, like, stuff. Yeah, for sure. So um, let, let's kind of dive a little bit more into the personal brand. You said that every, you know, salesperson SDR should be doing this. What if they're not as funny as you? What, when, what in the world should they be doing? Yeah, so a lot of times I think that people that – that aren't funny also have other things to bring to the same table and funny is subjective I get that but a lot of times there's value no matter what there's somebody that's out there that's just super knowledgeable and it's a great thing to be able to share that knowledge with everybody that's either following you on social media or everybody that's connected to you or that you're about to call just be taking that consultative approach be taking that on as your personal brand can be very helpful yeah for sure and so do you do you find yourself even, uh, let's, let's talk about the personal brand aspect. The, do you do any type of blogging, any type of thing, any type of insight on that? Yeah, so I've given a lot of thought to a blog or even a vlog. I remember you and I had a conversation not long yeah. ago about me trying to take on something similar to what you're doing. But believe it or not, it was tough for me to get started that way. And after going through a lot of your material, it would have been really tough for me to not sound very repetitive on your end. So I think I needed to take a totally different approach and I took the approach of funny guys, social media, posting great things, I love your content, and I get a lot of inbound stuff that way. So sales development reps, notoriously outbound sales. But if you could take some of those outbounds with your personality and turn them into inbounds, then you become very successful that way because you're starting more conversations. Yeah, and there's two things I wanna dive into here. One, I'm glad that you realized that like it would have been repetitive. So what I really wanna talk about here is that like, um, you need to figure out what you're good at, right? This, uh, I'm, I've just found that I'm really good at video, so obviously this is sure. what I'm on the video currently right now. Oh, but yeah. if you told me to go write a blog post, I would literally just leave you. I wouldn't even talk to you because I don't. <laughs> so, but that's the thing, though. And even me trying to be, like, super funny, like, continuously, I don't think I could do that every single day, but James can. So my whole point, what James just said, is what I want to dive down home with every single person. Like, do not try to replicate something that you're not comfortable with. And just because you see someone is seeing success from it or seeing some type of accolades from, from it does not mean that you should do the same exact thing because you're probably not going to get the same results because that's probably something that you're actually not aligned with at all. So I'm glad that you kind of realized that you're like, hey, look, like this is what I'm the most comfortable with. And I feel like you probably have seen more clarity in actually doing that. You probably feel a little bit more seamless in what you're doing. I feel very confident in what I do with my personal brand at this point. Uh, and, but I will, I will not lie. It took a lot of research to come to that conclusion, right? You've got so much great content out there. And I had to know that this was not me. This was your brand. And I didn't want to have Morgan Ingram's brand. I needed to have James Buckley's brand. 
so that was important to me to be able to build on my sense of humor, which people tend to, to, to respond really well to, which I think is funny. Like I, I, I tell people all the time, Brandon, my, my boss, who's a great guy, probably the best boss I've ever had, pays me to say inappropriate things to people. And I say inappropriate things to people, and I'm always amazed at how it goes over. I don't know how I still have a job sometimes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So let's talk about um, the number two. What have been the, because you talked about, hey, people are saying it's funny. What have been the actual benefits for you uh, by creating this personal brand? The benefits for me are I don't have to do so much outbound stuff. There's always this big debate online, especially online, about cold calling and whether or not outbound sales is dead and content rules and there's so much back and forth and there's so many little nuances to this argument that I see all the time, especially on networks like LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, so it was, it was an interesting thing to read that, all that content, all that stuff, and have to internalize it and say, well, what am I going to do that's different? How am I going to stand out? Uh, and the way that you stand out is by doing something different than what everybody else is doing. Right now, Valprop emails, automated emails with Val propositions left and right, is huge. So I moved to connection-based selling. I send emails out that have no Val prop at all. They're two sentences and they say, I'm, I'm having trouble booking time with you. How do I make it onto your priority list? That's all they say. And I, I get responses from that because it's quick, it's short. I know that the attention span is not such that people will go through and click all my links just because I sent them. It doesn't work that way, right? They're not interested. They know it's an automated email most of the time. So they're quick to delete it. So how am I going to stand out and be unique in this world of people that are just val propping everyone to death? Yeah, and you really have to. And do you find that you get a lot of inbounds because of your activity through LinkedIn? Absolutely. And it's a little easier to have conversations because people are reaching out to me saying, I read that article you wrote on two years as an SDR and what you've learned. Great article. I'd love to chat sometime. Right. Like, cool. I love meeting new people. That's why I do this job is because I love meeting new people. So of course I'm gonna reach out and say, yeah, I'm free Wednesday too, let's make it happen, and we do. So then it's a little bit about what they do, and again, right, stressing that fact, you wanna be interested in them, don't be in it for yourself, be in it for your customer, your prospect, tell me about your role there. So they go off, and it's only polite, it's only natural, it's an instinct that we have, what about you? And that's where you have an opportunity to say, well, we, you know, we work in the Salesforce community, how familiar are you with Salesforce? Well, we use it every day. Oh, well, great. This will be really great for you. Let's, ch let's chat about what we do, and then we'll go right. through, see if we can find a way for our two companies to align. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And I, I kind of want to uh, take it in a different direction. So you're now no longer just an SDR, right? You are that's now true. leading people. So what are you telling your people, and they're like, I want to build a personal brand. Like, What are the questions you're asking them, and how are you actually helping them promote that? Yeah, so uh, I'll, be, I'll be up front. I, I never was a Gary Vanderchuk fan. Never. Uh, I don't know why. Now, now you got to leave my show. Now it's over. No, but, but, but I'm, I'm a convert, though. I'm a convert. But, so, so I get out. Like, I have allergies real bad. I got up at, like, 3 in the morning one day. and nothing to do. Yeah. I'm sitting on my couch. And, yeah, I could probably bang out some emails at 3 a.m. Sure, why not? But I'm on YouTube, and I see this thing, Gary Vanderchuk, right? And I watch it. So, like, you know, three, four hours later, I've watched, like, 13 videos of Gary, Gary <laughs> And I was like, man, me and this dude have like a lot in common, like the way that we think. Like, I don't want to sound like crazy, like me and Gary V hang out. I've never met the man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's got a couple times on LinkedIn, but you know, he, he hasn't got back to me. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, I, like that, that really changed everything about the way that I was doing things. And I came in and I was like, guys, I don't do anything the way you do it. But yet here I am at, you know, 35 trial starts and, you know, 70 grand for the month in revenue. And here you are at eight trial starts with like three grand in revenue. Let's talk about it. Like this has to be discussed. Why is this consistently happening? And how can we change your approach? So their approach was that traditional Val prop automated, you know, and I was like, dude, we got to get away from this. This has to stop. Let's build a personal brand, be on social media. I want to see everyone writing articles and putting it out there. I'll share it. Our, our team upstairs will share it. Our account executives talk to thousands of people. There's no reason why, as an organization, we can't be supporting our sales development teams, and those sales development teams can't be putting content out of their own. So why do you think most sales development teams do not do that? You know, that's a great question. I, I, would, I would challenge anybody to reach out to me and tell me why that doesn't happen. Uh, I, we had SDRs here for over a year that I had never seen a post on LinkedIn from. So I started saying things like, you should be sharing other people's things if you're not writing your own. I, right. asked, I asked everyone on my first day, do you consider yourselves strong writers? 
And everybody said, yeah, you know, kind of, sure. Uh, we've got a great girl here that does awesome editing. Like, she'll find grammatical errors and tell right. people. And you can use apps for that, like Grammarly and stuff. But that personal touch, very important. All the things that you represent in your writing, in your, in your production. Uh, look at your show is a great example of that. The value that you bring to the SDR community is what's important there. Right. You know, that's the focus. It really doesn't have anything to do with your, 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 uh, uh, your company or your product that you sell. It has everything to do with the value that you bring to the table. But before your product is valuable, you're the one that's valuable. Yeah, I love it. And let's uh, let's let's switch it up here because let's talk about building the relationships using your personal brand. So how how are you doing that, and how have you been doing that? Yeah, you have to reference the content that drives people to you. That's the key. So oftentimes I'll post something on LinkedIn, and I'll get an inbound message on LinkedIn, a direct message, and it'll say, "I read this, and I thought it was great." Uh, and I'll say, "Awesome. Uh, have you read any of my other stuff?" I'll tell you some stuff you should definitely check out. And that's when I'll plug somebody that I'm working with right now. Uh, so I'll have a good opportunity to plug a, a local company here in Knoxville, Tennessee, or uh, a company that I met in San Francisco at Dreamforce last year, uh, because this person and I have this connection, and I want to use it to my full advantage and offer some value to them that's not directly related to my goals, right? That can happen later. The sale should happen as a result of the relationship that you've built. And I've seen lots of debate on this on LinkedIn as well. Uh, a lot of sales leaders come forward and they say, hey, put your numbers first. You have to. If you don't put your numbers first, you're going to miss goals. But I like to reach those goals and then some. <laughs> I, I like people to, to say, I'm going to do this that James asked me to do because that dude's awesome. Like, what? <laughs> right, exactly. I, don't, I don't really care. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, for sure. And, and like, that's, I think that's a big part of it is using that. And so with the relationships that you develop, like, if you set up a meeting, have you developed strong relationships relationships with them to be like, hey, do you know five other people to actually that I need to talk to? Like, are you actually using the referral system? Yeah, you know, I don't even have to ask. It seems to happen very organically. Uh, I, I'll have people reach back out to me on LinkedIn after I've turned them on to Cirrus Insight, and they'll say, hey, I've got a great prospect for you. I'm going to connect him to you if that's okay. And I mean, who's going to say no to that, right? I'm like, no, I, don't, I don't need any more prospects. I'm no, I'm all set. I've got all the money I need. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy talk, uh, which brings me to another point of my personal brand is that I am a challenging individual. I, I challenge decision makers all the time. Uh, we're all set. I'm unwilling to accept that answer, right? I don't know how you're all set, but I'd love to find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's the kind of stuff I say, and it's part of my personal brand. I'm going to make you laugh, but then I'm also, I'm also going to challenge the way you're thinking. Right, yeah, for sure. And, and that's that's also important as well. You know, I'm a, I'm a challenging person as well. I, I just think that like, obviously people say certain objections to get off the phone. So it's like, you kind of have to always challenge that person. I had a guy once say to me that as a 32 year sales veteran, I should understand that his lack of response to me overall should represent his no. So I responded and said, as a 32 year sales veteran, you should understand my inability to accept your soft no. What was that response back? <laughs> Fair enough. I'm free Wednesday. Yeah, there you go. I mean, that was a really easy one, but it, it's like people just, we're so willing to just let that go when they say things like we're all set. It's a very passive thing. So I tell my reps all the time, save that as a three month follow up. Last time we chatted, you said you were all set. Is that still the consensus? I think closing doors to new opportunities is not, not always the best thing to do. I'd love to right. chat. So on the phone, if someone says all set, you said one thing, what's something else that you'll say? Yeah, the all set thing is great. Uh, you know, hey, I get it. Everybody's kind of comfortable doing what they've been doing, but change brings progress. So here's what I'll do. Let me send you some basic information and I'll follow up a few months from now and we'll continue the conversation if you want to. And I never get someone that's like, no, don't send me anything. Don't send me, don't send me anything. But they're gonna look for that as an excuse to get off the phone too. I'll give them the excuse, but then I'm gonna send it and I'm gonna follow up. Right. But you're going to hear from me again, you know? I'm not, I'm not going away. Right. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. You can't go away. So, yeah, relationships, we talked about building that a personal brand. Um, how important are our relationships for you um, currently right now? Relationships for me are very important, uh, long-term relationships specifically. Uh, you know, I think that we, we get on this kick. SDRs fall into the same category all the time, right? Our our brains say, I'm going to peck away at this person, and I'm going to turn them on to this, come hell or high water, this is going to happen. 
And eventually, after six months of trying, lots of different channels, lots of different approaches, it happens. Once it happens, what do we do? Hey, thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. I'm done here. And we walk away. And that's the wrong way to be. I'm setting follow-ups after I've achieved my goal with that person. Right. Hey, how are things going? I'd love to reconnect and see how things are. I hope the trial went well. What, is there anything that I could do to help you improve moving forward? Are there any other needs I can meet? These are things I send to people because it's important to carry on that relationship after you've achieved the goal. Otherwise, you're just like everybody else. We're just selling you something and then walking away. Yeah, I mean, and you really can't do that. And so even with the relationships that you're building with your personal brand, do you find, are you connected with people outside of just your prospects? And the people outside of your prospects, how are you cultivating those relationships? Yeah, sure. So I am a really good friend. This is a great example. A really good friend of Christopher Pallant. He works for a local company here in Knoxville called Smarter Searches. They're not a prospect for us. They don't use Salesforce. I met him through a BNI networking thing that I that I set up here in Knoxville, which you know BNI didn't pan out for us. It wasn't a good fit for us. But I met this man through that network. Right. They don't use Salesforce at Smarter Searches, but he's very well connected. He does great web design and advertisement for companies, marketing. Uh, they just won the Pinnacle Award at the uh, uh, at an Knoxville event here. Uh, so it's a business award. It's, it's great. So him and I talk all the time uh, just about how things are going with BNI, how things are going at Smarter Searches, how are things at Serious Insight. We do a lot of back and forth that way. Occasionally we get together after work and get a beer, and he's always got somebody that he can refer me to. Right. I've always got people that I can refer him to. So it's a valuable relationship, regardless of the fact that our companies can't do business together. And do you think you would have those relationships if you were not building your personal brand? Absolutely not. There's no way. Uh, the content that you put out there represents what you're valuable for to a potential customer. Uh, I, I find all the time that the templates I put out there uh, they're useful. People say, I'm going to put this into my workflow right now. And I'm always very cautious with that. Like, hey, wait a minute now. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't just throw it out there. Like, maybe we should. Yeah. Do you encourage people not to throw it out there? Or is it just like, you got to think about it first, of course. Well, I try to put context in the mind of folks, right? I, I put a template out there with no context at all because I want to see how people respond to it without the context. Yeah. What do you think of this template? And here's the template. Uh, and it's amazing to me the things you get back. And one guy hit on a comment uh, for the one that I put out there that really went crazy, which I thought was wild. I've never had that happen. Uh, he commented, hey, this has only been out for like eight hours, and I've been the genuine recipient of this template like four times today. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I thought that was really funny that people were just kind of like on LinkedIn grabbing this thought that I had, which was yeah. so random. Uh, and it <laughs> And, and, and using it in their workflow. Like, I'm gonna put this to work right now. So it was, it was funny to me. So now I'm very cautious when people say things like, I'm using this today. I'm like, well, wait a minute, let's talk about why I put that up there first. What yeah. open the doors for conversation about what they do and what I do and maybe our companies line up. Again, same concept, right? Connecting on a different level, leading into how can we be of value to each other. Yeah, and I, and I, and I like that. I think that you're obviously cultivating those relationships through something that is also is useful, yet it's funny at the same time. And yeah. I think that's obviously that's the super important thing. So how, what do you, how do you, can you, I want to kind of hear your thoughts on this. Cause when people think of personal brand, they think of like, you know, the spotlight, the glory, the, all that stuff. They're not thinking about what the actual relationships it creates. So what are you going to tell people who are like, you know, I'm, I'm creating a personal brand, but I'm not thinking about the relationship. I may not care about it. Yeah. I think being sincere with who you are is probably the best answer to that. You know, no, no one ever start. You don't want to start the relationship off on a lie. So something you, something you've pretended to be. Um, it's it's a very deceiving way to to present yourself. Uh, and then the same concept can be said for being very negative, right? Just anything that is a turn off. If it would be a turn off for you, my rule of thumb is that if my mother might have a problem with me posting this, don't post it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one. It, it's a good rule of thumb, right? Uh, when I first started on social media, I, dude, it was wild. I was posting the craziest things, like crazy things, bad language, you know, just really like off color stuff, like just right. right. Uh, and my mother would text me all the time, like, take that down. It's not good for your brand. And I used to think she was just nagging. But now, now I totally see the need for being, representing yourself on, in digitally in a, in a positive light. Yeah. And that's, 
that's the most important thing. You have to be representing yourself in a good light. You have to be a good representation. You can't be someone who's just like kind of willy nilly. You have to understand what this personal brand that you're building, how it's going to create relationships, because those relationships that you create are long lasting. As you were talking about relationships that actually not only help you in your current role, but can help you in your future career. Yeah, absolutely. I've made a lot of connections that I save their cards, uh, you know, because you never know when that person is going to be of value to your brand and how your brand can be of value to them. Uh, I, I think I think that we short ourselves as thinking that we're just cold callers, you know. Oh, we're bottom of the barrel, right? We're just entry level. I, I think that's crap. I'm a lifer. I'll always be an SDR before I'm anything else, regardless of what my title becomes. I love driving new business, meeting new people, bringing new conversations to the table. That, that for me, is what makes business fun. It's supposed right. to be fun. If you're not having fun with it, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, on that note, let's, let's ask the final question um, that I ask every single person that comes on the show. What's the one piece of advice? that you give to SDRs as they enter into their new role? Uh, make it about your customer. Make it about your customer and le learn to listen, definitely. Cool, awesome. Well, James, I appreciate you so much for coming on the, uh, the Chronicles today. Brought a lot of valuable insight on like building a personal brand, why it's important to create relationships and really diving deep there. So as I always say, guys, keep dialing and I'll see you guys soon.